Dear friends, I am back again after the holiday break for festivals, again to speak about Euclid. I guess my love affair with Euclid does not seem to end, you must be wondering that this guy is so crazy about it. Yeah, people would like to keep their love affair secret, but you know, this is such a nice love affair that you do not keep secret, you want to share it with people. I had once told you about the 13 volumes of the book called Elements which Euclid had written. It is now available as I told you and I had shown you in some one of the videos in 3 volumes published by Dover Publications. And this book, these 13 books have been coming in 3 volumes. The first volume consists of book 1 and 2 of Euclid. The second volume comes in book 3 and 9, uh, 3 to 9 comes in the second volume of Dover, books 3 to 9 and books 10 to 13 comes in the third volume and which consists of solid geometry and which has that famous proof that there are only 5 platonic solids, regular solids that is whose sides are made by regular polygons. Of course, there is a catch in that we can talk about it later. So, you see here it is solid geometry, solid stuff is drawn here. So, if you look at it, this book is translated with an introduction by Sir Thomas L. Heath. I had always wondered who this Thomas L. Heath guy was, but never really uh, was never really took much interest to figure it out. But suddenly I during this festival period I came across a book called Encounters with Euclid and there I found the story of Thomas L. Heath. Englishman of course because he is knighted with Sir. The interesting fact is that Thomas L. Heath was not a you know what we would call a professional mathematician, right? He was in the British civil service. But like many people in various uh, parts of human activity had been fascinated by Euclid. It is interesting that even in 21st century, even in 2021, books on Euclid come out. This book tells how, tells how the city of Alexandria where Euclid worked, into, which was established by King Ptolemy and he worked during that time, who was a great lover of culture and arts and geometry and who put in this very big library of Alexandria, museum of Alexandria where great uh, philosophers, mathematicians, artists all worked there. Now, the city was named after Alexander because Ptolemy was a bodyguard of Alexander and nobody knows much about what Euclid was his personal life or how many kids he had or how many uh, houses he had or something like that. Nobody knew about that but of course his books remain. Everything about that civilization has been destroyed that has gone extinct. The last member of that civilization was the famous Queen Cleopatra. And then Alexandria was not in Greece, it was in Egypt actually, modern day Egypt near the Nile, right? So, on the bank of the Nile river. So, that everything was gone, but interestingly enough, this book element travels across the world and influences this whole world and the way mathematics is now done all across the world. The mathematics that we do today is inspired by the elements, the way Euclid had arranged geometry, geometrical facts. That is the approach we take to mathematics, basic assumptions, postulates, and axioms and then the results. So, this book Encounters with Euclid by Benjamin Wardhaw actually tells you that story of how this has happened, when it has come and uh, how, how it has progressed all over the world that that single book from Greece, nothing else has in influenced humanity to such a great extent. There are books by Plato, Plato's Republic and all those things, but no book has really influenced humankind, really helped humankind progress than the elements of Euclid. In fact, I have a book called How Round Is Your Circle, it is a book about applying geometry, Euclid's geometry to engineering problems. And, uh, when I bought that book from Amazon, I wrote a saw, saw a review 
an engineer possibly wrote that after reading this book, Euclid has become his new hero. Uh, I know that for me Euclid was a hero since my 8th standard when I first came to know that the geometry I was learning was Euclidean and when I first actually started loving mathematics, been a bad student of it for such a long, for all the while ago till the 8th standard, a story which I told you in how I learned maths. So, now there were many famous personalities who are been influenced by the elements. One of them is Abraham Lincoln and that is told in very nicely in this book by a very famous mathematician and number theorist Jordan Ellenberg. His book is called Shape, the Hidden Geometry of Absolutely Everything. He has written another book called How Not to Be Wrong that is largely with status about statistical decisions. But it is interesting that person of number theory writes about geometry and also writes about statistics. Statistics is also here. He seems to have a very good fascination for it. For example, I work in optimization, I am speaking so much about geometry, about Euclid and all. So, you can have fascinations about other things. Uh, these are other aspects of mathematics becomes your hobby and that is what you want to share with others, right. So, in this book, in the first chapter is called I vote for Euclid. I do not know whether you can see it well or maybe not. So, the first chapter is I vote for Euclid. Here he speaks about how geometry should be done. Can, is geometry just some definitions, some postulates and some results and just a dry thing or it has relations to our visual world and he says yes that is the way geometry has to be think. If you are talking about isosceles triangle means equal arms, what about an isosceles quadrilateral, what about rhombus which has all sides equal but, but no, no, it is not a rectangle or a square. So, it, it, sorry it is not a square but all sides are equal, it is slanted. So, basically you have a square and you slant it a bit, push it a bit. So, because by pushing you do not change the length of a line, that is the key idea, right. So, will you call it isosceles? When you can call an object isosceles? So, he discusses that in terms of transformation that you should be able to pick up geometrical objects, flip them, do something with them, transform them, move them and see what happens to them. That is the best way to look at geometrical objects. That is why a modern view of geometry is geometrical properties are those uh, properties which remain invariant under certain transformations. So, geometry is basically a set X with a group of transformations or a collection of transformation which leaves certain properties invariant. So, in that way many different types of geometries come up. So, that is how we move from just viewing geometry as line points, triangles and circles to geometry as algebraic systems and that link that algebra and geometry are interchangeable in some sense is a, is a very, very fundamental thing, right. So, here there is an interesting proof of Pythagoras theorem given by Bhaskara 2. I think you can see this proof very clearly, if not clearly maybe I will just put here. So, the there is a right angle triangle ABC of sides ABC where C is the hypotenuse and A and B are the vertical and horizontal sides. So, you look at these two squares, look at this square where if I take away the 4 triangles of sides A, B, C from the big square of sides A plus B which has area A plus B whole square, the only thing that is left is the square C square of area C square that is side C. Now, look at this one. If I take away the 4 triangles, I am left with these squares of sides A and B. So, total area A square plus B square. So, since I have taken away exactly those 4 triangles from both these squares which are the same squares, the area left is same. So, C square is equal to A square plus B square. This is a picture with proofs, people might not agree, but a lot of Euclid's book deals with picture with proofs which pure logicians might not like at all. The first proposition in book 1 of Euclid says if you take a straight line, can you construct an equilateral triangle with that side because they are the same side. The idea is simple if A B is a straight line, 
take A as a center, AB as a radius, draw a circle. Take B as a center, B as a radius, draw a circle. They intersect at two points C and D. So let me join A with any of them. Let me see A and B with C. So AC is a radius, BC is a radius, AB is just a radius, and they are, have the they have the same uh, length, and hence it is equilateral triangle. Now purists, including David Hilbert, who had questioned, how do you know that if you draw two triangle circles like that, it would not intersect in less than two points, more than two points? How do you know that? Of course, they said that you look at the picture and then you can ascertain that. I said yes, I agree. But if you can keep on drawing all pictures in this form, doing intersecting circles like this, they will always exactly intersect in exactly two points. But Hilbert thought it is better to put this as an axiom. So a circle cannot intersect in more than two points. Either it touches at one point or intersects in two points and this Hilbert wrote a book called Geometry where he completely reworked the reworked Euclidean geometry having a new set of axioms. And in that new set of axioms, and there are too many axioms now, it will bore you down to death. I will one day show you, it will bore you down to death. And that is what is taught in many schools abroad including American schools. But I am happy that I never learned geometry like that. I just went around and learned about facts, right, about results. About the first result I remember that if a stand line, straight line stands on another straight line, the two angles sum up to two right angles that is 180 degrees, which is actually the 13th proposition in book 1 of Euclid. So, this uh, book as I told you this is introduced by Thomas L. Heath and I this as I showed you that people from very different professions actually had been influenced by the elements. So this is a book which had actually influenced humanity more than any other text. So I would rather suggest to you that you should definitely those who really love mathematics buy these two books. This, this book, The Encounter with Euclid is for those who actually are involved in mathematics, those who really want to love geometry, who are in, in, in when I really want to go in pursuit of geometry or history of mathematics. But this is a book you would enjoy because there are so many things which are linked to geometry, which starts which when even something to do with uh, mosquitoes, something to do with spread of diseases is linked to geometry nowadays. So I would suggest this to be learned. I mean, they, sorry, this to be have a read or at least give a look into. So that is what I am trying to say that Euclid's book is filled with gems. Reading that is an amazing experience. I have been looking on and off in this book. It is only when I become a thorough professional mathematician I really want, went and bought these books because I thought that it is very high time I know uh, really about the elements about which I am which I have been hearing from my childhood. And today I end with a problem. So if two circles intersect each other in two distinct points, exactly two distinct points, they cannot have the same center. Can you prove that? Just have a try, you will have fun. Euclid's elements are actually fun. If you go through them the way he proves it, uh, he says, okay, these are given and I said this will happen. This is how he says or says let a circle be drawn. and. Benjamin Wardo writes this whole line like let a circle uh, be drawn has a hypnotic feel about it. As I told you in the, the Principia of Isaac Newton is filled with proofs using Euclidean geometry and his setup of the Principia was following the lines of the elements such is the influence of this book. So let us uh, say a goodbye to each other for the weekend. And then we will get into more machine learning and optimization and more stuff of the days, stuff of the current days. Thank you. Thank you very much.